Obviously, it seemed like you had your, uh, a number of opportunities to change jobs um, in, in the press anyway. Um, and this job comes with uh, the fact that the president is going to be stepping down on June 30th, if not before, and, may bring, and a new president may bring with him a new athletic director. Uh, what consideration did you take into those facts before, as you made your, up your mind to take this job? Again, we had great dialogue, and we talked about everything. I was completely upfront and honest with all my concerns and things that I was excited about. They were completely upfront and honest about all their concerns and things that they were excited about. We had great dialogue on multiple occasions, not only in person but over the phone. Um, you know, and that was a concern. That was a concern. But I think with the right plan and the right people and the discussion that we had, um, you know, what I was sold on and what I believe is that 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 Penn State has a has a has a plan and has a purpose has a, a certain type of individual that they want to bring here and that they're that, that are going to be attracted to this institution so um, hopefully we're in a position where we're able to have these conversations for a very long time um, but the, the plan was and the discussion was that, that Penn State is going to attract the best and the brightest and people with the same values so uh, that that's what made me very very comfortable Hi, Todd. How are you? Good. Uh, Coach O'Brien left after two years, but you know him very well. Were you surprised that this job opened up? You said it didn't happen quickly for you. Who contacted you? Were you interested immediately once you heard Coach O'Brien had left and, and how it works between Dave and, and yourself as far as the circle? Yeah, I, I was very interested right from the beginning. Um, you know, when I heard about the opportunity and I heard about the opening, um, you know, obviously, you know, there was some contact from that point on, um, and we, we started to get into discussions. Um, it, you know, it's kind of, it's very difficult because you have a job and you have a responsibility, and, and we had a game to play. Um, but we try to keep our focus on that, um, control the things that we can control, and, and if an opportunity presents itself, to sit down and have a discussion about this job in the future once the season was over, then we were going to do that. Um, luckily, we were able to do that, and I'm fortunate to be sitting here today as the next head football coach at Penn State University. Coach Jerry Fisher, WBLF Radio. Question for you: Hi, Jerry. How are you, Jerry? I'm doing good, thanks. I like the head. I was the head. <laughs> someone, someone saw me talking to Dr. Joyner today and asked if I was you, and I said, obviously, no, that's not the case. But the question is, it's everything's happened so quickly. Have you had a chance to think about staff? Have you had a chance to think about Ron Vanderlinden or Larry Johnson or any of the former coaches or your staff that you may bring with you? Yeah, I, I have. You know, I'm a guy that for the last 12 years has, has been creating a staff. You know, I have list of receiver coaches and tight end coaches and offensive coordinator and defensive coordinators um, for the right job and the right fit and the right setting, making sure that we're always prepared. Um, that's something that you're going to find uh, from me is we're going to work very, very hard at being prepared for every situation that may come up. Um, I am fiercely loyal as a person in general, um, and I'm going to be fiercely loyal to the guys that I've worked with in the past. But I also know that you know we're going to sit down and, and, and have some discussions with some people that are here. I think there's some people that can help us in the transition, uh, guys that have strong Penn State ties, guys that understand this place. And although we had a plan that was very effective at Vanderbilt, you also better have a plan that's specific to that institution. And when you have people that have a history and understand the place, they can help with that. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to sit down with the coaches as well as some of the administration and put together the very best staff that we possibly can put together for Penn State University. James Willie Jungle Center County Report right here in the middle. Um, given the fact that a coach has just left for the NFL from this job and there was rampant speculation that you would be having interviews with uh, National Football League teams, what is it about the collegiate game that you enjoy the most? Yeah, I, I had a great experience in my time in the NFL. I think it was something that was very important in my development, there's no doubt about it. But I'm a college guy. I'm a relationship guy. You guys are going to... You guys can ask me what our offensive philosophy and defensive philosophy and special teams philosophy is. Um, I really don't care. You know, to me it's about people. I love kids. Um, you're not going to find a coach that cares more about their players than me. And their complete development, you know, academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, the whole package. And that's what drives me. Um, you know, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be a football coach. 
I got my undergraduate degree in psychology. I wanted to get my doctorate in psychiatry or, or psychology. Um, and started to coach the game of football as a graduate assistant to get it paid for and realized that I could have just as much of an impact on people and kids' lives through the game of football uh, than through psychology or psychiatry and caught the bug. And um, you know, that, that's what it's all about for me. That's why it was so difficult in leaving Vanderbilt because those kids were my family. And um, you know, that's what we're going to build here. James. Pat Prince of being on ALT TV, good in Lancaster. My hair resembles Warrior President, so. <laughs> um, have you had any dialogue with current Penn State players? If not, when will you and what will your message be to them? Yeah, it is going to be a sprint uh, from here on out, and that's uh, talking to the players, the current players. That's going to be contacting recruits. That's going to be contacting uh, former players. Um, that's going to be contacting influential supporters of the program and, and, and of the university. Uh, we got a lot of work to do in a very, very short period of time. And it's time sensitive because of the recruiting process as well. So um, you know, basically when we leave here, uh, probably till 2 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll be back up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning getting going again. Um, luckily, I'm fortunate I'm not a guy that needs a whole lot of sleep. Uh, my wife does. Um, uh, we, we always have those discussions. You know, she's amazed that I can get by on five hours. So that, that's just kind of who I am. So um, the interesting thing with this job is you got to wear a lot of hats, and every job is important. You know, connecting with the former players, recruiting, um, developing relationships on campus. I think it's one of the best things that we did when we first got to Vanderbilt. Is you know, I went around and took every dean, the provosts, vice chancellors out to lunch, and I plan on doing the same thing here. You know, taking everybody that I can on this campus out to lunch and getting to know them and asking them questions of what can we do better, and what are areas that you think I need to be aware of. Same thing in the community, reaching out as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, I had a unique experience with the Green Bay Packers in the NFL, but that was kind of like a college program because it's amazing how that organization is so connected to the community. And that's what I love about college football. So me and my wife and my children, we'll, we will be out in this community. We will not turn down a speaking engagement. We're going to get out. We're going to interact with people. Um, you know, people ask us to come speak at schools. We're going to be there. People ask us to come speak at social events. We'll be there. People ask us to come and blow up balloons at their kid's birthday party in the backyard. We'll do that as well. Uh, we're going to do everything we possibly can to, to bring this community back together, um, to really, really take pride in this program and where we're going and how we're doing it. Um, and couldn't, can't get more excited. As much as I love this press conference, uh, I really can't wait for it to end so we can run out of here and get to work. Uh, James, hey, it's uh, Mark Dent. James, where are you? Yeah, right here. I'm Mark Dent with the Post Gazette. Hey, James, how are you? Uh, it's Mark. That's oh, it. I'm sorry, Mark. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Uh, so, when you were growing up here in Pennsylvania, were you actually like a Penn State fan growing up? Did you go to games, things like that? And uh, I know you mentioned how you, you went to the camp or whatever. Did you even get like as much as a questionnaire ever from Penn State or, or any kind of? Whatsoever. I think I printed my own questionnaire off and filled it out and sent them in. Uh, they weren't sending them to me. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you know, everybody in the state grows up as, as a Penn State fan. Um, didn't come to games. You know, you know, grew up in a real blue-collar uh, family. and um, you know, we, did, we didn't come to Penn State football games. I was playing. You know, I was playing football games. I was out playing basketball. I was running around with my buddies in the neighborhood. Uh, competing, you know, um, you know, something that these kids don't really understand. They're sitting in the air conditioning, playing video games all day. You know, we were out running the streets, playing basketball, competing. And um, uh, but yeah, grew up a Penn State fan. Uh, always dreamed of this opportunity. And uh, it's funny, me and my wife were talking about the ride over here. We discussed this, you know, when when we first started dating about my dream jobs. And my answer to her was was Penn State. You know, I didn't know um, if I'd ever have the opportunity because. I didn't think the guy that was coaching when I was growing up would, would ever leave. Um, you know, so uh, uh, very, very proud. Very, very proud to have this opportunity. James Ken Brown, I witnessed sports in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, you talked about realizing your passion for coaching early on in your career uh, at schools like East Stroudsburg and in the PSAC. Uh, talk about getting from there to here now. Well, the other thing I'd like to mention is I think that's exciting. You know, the fact that. I went to East Stroudsburg University, which has historically been a phys ed teacher's college. And all my buddies are out you know, coaching throughout the state. All my teammates and buddies are coaching throughout the state. Um, I think that's going to be a tremendous resource for us, as well as the PSAC in general. 
Um, again, you know, I was a I was a Division two guy that's had to work for everything he's got in his profession. Um, but I've had great experience and I've had a chance to work for a bunch of really good guys. You know, Denny Dow's my college coach. I think he's been there 48 years. Uh, you know, uh, something that I'm going to try to challenge him with. Um, you know, my quarterbacks coach, Mike Kuroda, I think has been there 27 or 8 years. My college roommate, Mike Santello, has been there, I think, 12, 13 years. Um, I, I think, you know, being around people like that, obviously, you know, working for Ralph Region and, and Mike Sherman and, um, you know, and I experience all the great people I've worked with at Vanderbilt, um, I've been able to steal great things from everybody I've worked for. Um, I'd like to mention Debbie Yao, uh, who's been an unbelievable mentor to me. Um, to this day, I can still pick up the phone and call Debbie Yao, They're one of the most respected athletic directors in the country. Um, you know, so I, I've been fortunate to be around some great people and been able to steal things that I felt were uh, tremendous characteristics, leadership characteristics that fit my personality. Um, and that's been, that's been integral to, to my success.